Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of year again. The start of another year of European football. Yeah! A new format is upon us and clubs from the western shores of Ireland to the hustle and bustle of Azerbaijan are all looking to write their name into history this year. Three competitions, 108 teams, this season is poised to deliver something truly special. In this video, we'll be looking at five of the most exciting but yet unexpected teams to be participating in one of the three competitions this year. Whilst all 108 teams have a story to tell, the five that I will be going through today offer something unique and inspiring and could possibly be one of your favourite teams this year in the new format that we're going to see across Europe. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. Slovan Bratislava Yes, a club that was just minutes away from being knocked out of the Champions League in the qualifying rounds, but they managed to score two late goals against Danish side FC Mutualand to secure their first group stage or league stage passage, whatever you want to call it, since the 1992-1993 season, which was the inaugural Champions League season after it was rebranded from the European Cup. But did you know that Slovan Bratislava have actually won the Champions League before? Yeah, it's true, they won it in 1969 when they beat the FC Barcelona 3-2 in the final. But it wasn't known as the Champions League as we know it today, it was actually called the European Cup Winners' Cup. And at that time you could only qualify for the competition by winning your domestic league, which Slava and Bratislava did, and they got all the way to the final by beating Barcelona. As you can imagine, it was a massive moment for not just the club, but the entire country. Also, it wasn't known as Slovakia back then, it was Czechoslovakia, I believe. If anyone knows something different, then do tell me in the comments section below. But to this day, they remain the only Slovak team to ever win a European title. Throughout the 2000s and 2010s, Slovan Bratislava dominated Slovak football, but as they were getting more and more involved in European football every year by qualifying for the Europa League, it meant that teams like Zelenia and Tonava were able to win the league in their place, meaning that they weren't able to qualify for European football as often. Now they have a shot back at the big time, and whilst many teams will be looking at Bratislava as a team easily beatable, they are one of the few teams that have won a European Cup. So this year they'll be starting their campaign in Glasgow where they'll be heading to Celtic Park before hosting Manchester City back in Bratislava. They'll also face Girona, another club with a very exciting story, but hold on, we'll talk about them a little bit later on. Slovan will also have the pleasure of playing against four-time champions Bayern Munich before also facing Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid. So will Slovan Bratislava be able to stage more drama this year? Let me know in the comments. Heading from Bratislava and the Champions League, we'll be going to Yerevan, Armenia in the Europa Conference League where we'll be talking about FC Noah. The club was formed in 2017 and they started off by being based to represent the state of Artska, which I believe is in Azerbaijan, but more recently they moved to the capital of Armenia, Yerevan, where they still are based. And they rebranded the club to be called FC Noah, which is a reference to the Bible story of Noah's Ark, something that is deeply connected to the country of Armenia. Last season, FC Noah finished second in the Armenian Premier League, matching their best ever league finish. They started the qualifying off by beating Skandesia of Macedonia before beating Slimenia Wanderers. And then they caused a massive upset by beating Greek giants AEK Athens. And then to top it all off, in the final qualifying round, they managed to beat Slovakian side Ruzomberek. Their reward for such an impressive qualifying performance in the Conference League means that they will be going to London at Stamford Bridge to face Chelsea. Alongside that trip in November, they'll be facing the likes of Applewell Nicosia and Rapid Vienna of Austria. It's truly a remarkable story with this Armenian club. They are very much so just starting off, given that they were founded less than 10 years ago, and now they have a chance on one of the biggest stages of world football. Make sure to keep an eye out for FC Noah. And now staying with the Europa Conference League, we'll be looking at Bosnian side Borg Banja. A club with an interesting story it was actually between them and Moldovan outfit Petro Cub FC, both of whom will be making their first ventures into European football this year. But Borg's story hit home, especially after putting up a great fight against Hungarian giants Ferencváros. They eventually lost on a penalty shootout, meaning that they missed out on Europa League football, but will play in the Europa Conference League this year. But the story for this club goes beyond qualifying for the Conference League this year. 
Between the years of 2016 and 2019, this club bounced between the second and first division. However, when they eventually came back in 2019, they ended up winning the league title just two years later on, clinching their second ever title in Bosnian football. Last season, they managed to clinch their third ever title in a race that's been heavily contested with Zinski Mosta and FK Sarajevo. But with those other two Bosnian clubs knocked out of European football early in the qualifying rounds, it was Boric Banjo who had to be flying the flag for Bosnia this year. Prior to this year, they had attempted eight times to qualify for the main competition for European football, but it's only here in 2014 that they finally have managed to do it. In previous years, they've managed to get to the second qualifying round of European football, but this year they managed to go even further than that. Beating Ignatia of Albania and KI from Iceland, it means that for once and for all, they have finally managed to beat the curse and qualify for European football. Borg Band should know that they'll be playing against Greek side Panathinaikos, Apoel Nicosia, and a trip back to Iceland where they'll place Vikingur Reykjavik. All of that is before hoping for some Irish luck when they play against the Shamrock Rovers in the final game of the group. So Borak Banja Luka, this is your moment. RFF, Rigas Football Scholas. In a country where football takes a backseat to the national passion of ice hockey, FK RFS have managed to achieve something remarkable by qualifying for the Europa League this year. Formed in 2010, the club came as a result of a merger between Dalgava Riga and RFS Flamenco, and since then they have risen through the ranks of Latvian football. Domestically, the club have won two Viz Liga titles, including a 2023 championship title, and they currently lead their city rivals Riga FC by 10 points in the league. However, it's their run in Europe that's truly capturing attention. This is the club's second venture into European football. Back in 2022, they played against Istanbul Shahir, Fiorentina and Hearts of Scotland, where they only managed to get two draws and four defeats across their six games. This summer, they suffered Champions League exit after being smashed by Bodo and Glimt, but they managed to turn things around by beating Apoel Nicosia on a penalty shootout in the Cypriot capital. Their fixtures include former Champions League and Europa League winners such as Galatasaray, Anderlecht, my beloved Ajax, along with Dynamo Kiev. RFS are without doubt one of the biggest, if not the biggest underdog story in this season's European football. With away trips to Germany, Ukraine and Romania all on the horizon, and their 2000 seater stadium are set to host teams from the Netherlands, Belgium and Turkey. With their first game of the Europa League being against FCSB of Romania, formerly known as Dawa Bucharest on September the 26th, Make sure you keep an eye out for their run in the Europa League. The final name in this list is FC Girona, a team that I'm sure that many of you know by now. A club that's nestled between the towering Pyrenees and the vibrant city of Barcelona, this club was once on the brink of obscurity but now is writing a new chapter. Throughout the 1980s and the 1990s, the club had to go through a lot of financial problems where the only goal was just to simply survive. Floating between the third division and the regional leagues, it was only in the 2000s when the club returned to the second division. Then in 2017, the club achieved its first ever promotion to La Liga, the top flight of Spanish football. With the financial help of joining the City Group, Girona have gone from a second division team to a team now qualifying for the UEFA Champions League. Up until the winter of last year, Girona were competing with the likes of Real Madrid, Barcelona and Atletico Madrid for the title. Despite a drop-off in form in the second half of the year, Girona managed to qualify for the Champions League, surprising absolutely everybody. Now sitting at Europe's head table, the club faces some exciting but yet terrifying fixtures. Their debut in the competition will be at the Parc des Princes, where they'll face PSG, before a clash with Liverpool, six-time champions Liverpool, before facing AC Milan, a team that have won the competition five times themselves. Adding a bit more flavour to the mix, they'll also be playing Mikel Arteta's Arsenal. But it seems like Girona aren't here just to make up the numbers. They've signed players like Donny van der Beek from Manchester United, Daley Blind, who's been at the club for a year now, and Gabriel Mezui from Ajax, a really exciting Dutch prospect. Not to mention Arnout Danjuma, another promising striker who joins the club from Villarreal. So from the shadows of Barcelona and Espanyol to the bright lights of Europe's biggest stage, make sure you keep a keen eye on FC Girona this year in the Champions League. 
So they are the five teams that I think that you should look out for this year across the Champions League, the Europa League and the Conference League. If there are other teams that you think should be mentioned, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below.